Hello, virtual doll convention. We are back with our next program. I could not be more excited for the presenter and the subject of our program. You are looking at Billy's collection of Maggie Bessie dolls, y'all. Hi, Billy. Hi. Hi. So all the Maggie Bessies are back home in North Carolina. And they are. Of, yes. It's and so fun to see them in one spot. Yes, and I know not all of you got out to the museum, so now we're going to show them off again and uh, let you see them all at home. And they're in my home collection. They're my prized dolls. They are um, phenomenal. Just one Maggie Bessie is just so hard to find. And Billy, you have been collecting these for a long time. They're just some of your absolute favorites. What draw them? To, what what drew you to them in the very beginning? What draws them to me is that they're each unique. Though when we start studying them, you'll see they're each different. Mm -hmm. I love that they're of North Carolina. Yeah. Um, they're made of materials found in North Carolina and that the two artists were from my state. So kind of have that hometown connection. Absolutely, absolutely. So we're gonna, I'm peeking up here because these are some cute little minis right here. Are these the mini Maggie Bessies? Okay, now these are not antique dolls, right. but they're just as special to me because my best friend Bradley Justice made them. Aren't they and amazing? And he painted them, everybody. He painted them. He's so talented. He uh, sewed them, made them from scratch, just like the sisters would have. Well, I think they're phenomenal. Um, he's got his own unique personality to them. So, you know, they look like Maggie Bessie's, but then they have Bradley Yarber. They're Bradley yeah, Bessie's. Bradley Justice's <laughs> spirit. They're I'm amazing. Out. And I'll bring one down here because they are so cute. And uh, the exciting news is that somewhere in the future, and we're not going to give a deadline now, but he is going to make a pattern for, I call them the Maggie Bessie minis. So yes, I know. Keep watching oh, his uh, Swell Doll Shop for that occurrence. We are so excited because so many of us purchased the larger pattern, and so to make a mini is just going to be yes. so exciting. Uh, sort of the same thing with the little jointed Look at legs little and feet. arms. And uh, just really I love it. very, I very love sweet. I love it. These, um, they're, they're exquisitely made. These two pictures we saw in your first program in January, and you gave us a lot of the history of the Maggie Bessie family and their lineage, which was so, so, so wonderful. And so you have different examples here on this shelf. What are we looking at okay. right here? Okay, well, we, we're gonna look at a couple of earlier models, and the boy um, is very difficult to find. Took me 20 years to find him. Uh, he was in an attic uh, when the first people found him, and so he's got a little bit of another cloth doll on his face, but I love him just the same. Oh, he's amazing. Um, the boys do have brown eyes, and their hair is parted on the side instead of in the middle like the girls. Oh, there you go. That's how you can yeah. tell right away. Yes, that's a, that's a dead giveaway. Um, again, he has the painted ears, but the girls can have painted ears too. Um, and the early ones have it, the later ones have it. I think it was just a customer preference, um, whether they were there or not. So just very nice. But these two are like from the very uh, early 1900s. And then um, over here, the little girl on the right, she does have on a replaced costume. But again, you can see her paintings a little bit brighter, mm -hmm. cheeks a little bit redder, um, kind of matching what was going on in the 30, 20s through the 40s, and that's that the Patsy doll came out, and a lot of the little dolls with bright rosy colors, and um, the sisters were aware of that, and so that little trend followed along. Just phenomenal, Billy. Uh, and then we have another early one. Um, again, not that. as early as the other two, but, you know, 20s to 30s. Oh, just love them. And then these two over here are these artist creations. These two are artist creations. Mm -hmm. One of them is actually on an antique uh, Maggie Bessie body. Uh, we don't know if the sisters made it. I sort of suspect that a student made, made it because the students, they did teach people how to make them. Mm -hmm. And as I've discussed in the past, the sisters were very rigid about the bodies being very firmly stuffed. And this one has just that little bit mm -hmm. of give that I don't think Maggie and Bessie would have left. Mm -hmm. They would have stuffed it some more. Um, and then at the Old Salem, the town of Old Salem, does have the Maggie Bessie um, uh, postcards in their gift shop. And Old Salem does have a collection. Uh, Bradley and I went and looked, and I can't remember. It's somewhere between 15 and 17 Maggie Bessie dolls. <gasps> wow. Mm -hmm. And they have one Maggie Bessie boy, too. Um, theirs is dressed in a beige color or browns instead of the blues like mine. 
And then as we amazing. move down to the next row, we, we see um, another early doll. Um, they used white house paint to prime them. And like old houses, you see sometimes they get kind of the alligator paint. So mm -hmm. she is aging that same way because of that base coat. Um, and she is a larger size. And then when we go to the left, we see another antique version. And again, you can see she's very bright. So I suspect that she's very late 30s or early 40s. We're gonna get in so our viewers, our yeah. conventioners can see that. She is again, just so, it is amazing how they could do this where they look 3D. Yes. And it's and it's kind of like not an egg shape, but it's it's. Yes, it, well again, we talked about in the past about that there is like a little dart mm -hmm at the top of their forehead, and then there's one on their chin. And that, those two darts help give the face a little bit of roundness and gives her a chin. And when that's not completed, you can see over in that back right corner, um, the family tried to make some in the late 50s and early 60s, and you can see how it's all dimpled and warped, mm -hmm. and that's because they did not know to do those darts. Yeah, the darts made all the difference, that's for sure. Those are still sweet yeah. examples. Again, this is a family-made doll, and then the other two dolls are um, artists made on the far right. And then our little sweet little girl in the back is um, actually a Moravian doll from um, Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, so you can see she's completely different. Get in there. But she has that Moravian that. heritage, so we kind of include Absolutely. Her. Um, Maggie was instrumental in starting the um, puts, P-U-T-Z, it's pronounced puts, like the word put with a S on the end. Um, and they still do it as a candlelight tea service in Old Salem in modern day. So she's the one that invented that. What a pioneer she was. I just yes. love hearing all about her and her lineage and just her vision. And of course the dolls are just they're so beautiful. Billy, how often do they come up for sale? Um, Rarely. Uh, a few times a year. Mm -hmm. um, I will see them at auction. There's been a couple in the last few auctions. Um, I bought this one at auction last summer, but it's not a common doll. And then the ones I see at auction are actually dolls that I have seen before mm -hmm. because I know them all. Mm -hmm. Once I see one, I never forget them. Mm -hmm. My little boy went through three auctions before he just happened to come to my house <laughs> via his newest Aww. owner, did, who did not know I had been trying to trying get him all so along. Hard. Oh, I love it. So um, I, I tracked him. I, I know that it's just like a lot of other people know their dolls as mm -hmm. they come through. So a lot of the ones that are coming to auction have been at auction before. Right. So um, not that many ones that I haven't seen before. So. That's right. very rare doll. Well, if you find them, if you find them at out in thrift stores or something, then give Billy Harris a call. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> yes. She'll... Please keep thrift shopping. Yeah, you keep never thrifting. know. And the thing is, you you do never know. So it's you bad. it's know. wonderful to learn about these. But there is another. Um... Okay, when I bought this doll, she came with all types of family ephemera, and that's where I got the photographs and a lot of other uh, clothing and costumes and so forth. And she came with two jointed puppets. And these puppets, we're gonna pan around here so you guys can see them. They are out of this world good. Look at these, everybody. What, what's the difference between like a puppet and a paper doll? Well, they are paper, so we could just call them jointed paper dolls. Okay. But the reason I call them puppets is because they came with this wool yarn, and it's a very fine quality of wool yarn, and it was attached to them in several places. Unfortunately, it was very tangled up as it still is, and we decided to remove it just so the dolls would not become damaged. So that's how we know they were supposed to be puppets. Um, so when they cool. were sold to me, they were advertised as um, paper dolls or puppets that the sisters made. But as Bradley and I continued our research in Old Salem, uh, we realized that when lo we looked at one of the mother's dolls that she had painted, and Bradley told me there's one little thing that artists seem to do, and they always do it consistently on the imaginary people, and is that is the eyebrows are 
always the same. It just seems to be something that an artist does when they're doing an imaginary item. And then also I took the dolls to Susan Circus and Ann Coleman and some other authorities on early fabrics. Um, the sisters lived in the latter part of the 1800s through um, 1950 and 1960s. And they, these fabrics are from the 1850s, maybe the early 1860s, oh, according to my fabric experts. Um, so that kind of predates the dolls before the sisters were born. So we know they didn't make them. Now, do I know 100% that the mother made them? I don't know, mm -hmm. but we've, we're following clues. We're being detectives. We're going by the eyebrows. Also, she lived in Old Salem, and in the 1840s, a young lady moved to Old Salem from Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, another Moravian, and guess what she brought with her? More these, of these. These paper dolls that predate the mother. So we feel like she may, and this is research that we're still doing, so if any of you have clues out there, we would love to hear, but we feel like this girl moved into the Old Salem community Margaret, who this this is the photograph of Margaret Fole. We feel like that she may have taught her this art and brought the pattern with her. And I want to turn them over because the these Maggie was a beautiful artist, but her mother we know where she got it from because her mother was just fabulous. Oh, I mean, look wow. at this hair. Gasp. Yes. We're all out there clutching our pearls right now. This is amazing. Look at that, everybody. Oh, wow. And it's not just one oh, layer Oh, look at fabric. their little joints. Oh, no, they have a full under And they have, they're all jointed. Now, I want to see if our viewers notice anything about the feet, the lower legs. <laughs> Whoever attached this one, and it may have been reattached over time, uh, the feet were put on backwards. A little bit backwards. They should be outwards. It makes them a little bit more whimsical. That's, it does. That's pretty cute. That is just so neat. I'm sure this is going to inspire a lot of our viewers to actually put on full sets of underclothes on their paper dolls because it's and so cool. And again, we, we know you know, I, Zanna Walker, had those beautiful, um, delicate curls, and this, this doll sort of reflects that same beautiful little sausage curl that everybody loved oh, to have. yes, for sure. And beautiful laces. And this is just a wonderful wool fabric here, just so fine and beautiful. And then just little Dresden paper metallic decoration. I they believe are. that the feather may have been added later, but. Um, oh, they're just treasures. I'm just uh, sure you're so thrilled to have these in your collection with all of your wonderful Maggie just Bessie dolls. It kind of completes that circle. Yes. Um, what I wanted to tell our viewers though is that this is the pattern for the doll. This is the boy's torso and this is the girl's. These patterns were made by the family in the late 50s or early 60s. And of course, these are the arms and you can see how this matches over. Perfectly, yeah, can... there you go. Um, the leg piece is actually missing a little piece, but um, again, you can see how that would have fit there. And then it's of course so the family has those. their little bit of uh, writing of what the, the pattern is. Um, no. And then we have, they that. actually traced, so you could like put this down and that trace so it on, cool. and then you would do the, and then if you're then, really good, if you you're really good, you can do it just like that. So Billy, where can our conventioners go to purchase the this pattern? Uh, so we'll have make this pattern available uh, during the convention now that we've begun. So um, you can just go on to our website Yay! at ashleystalls.com and, and get the pattern. Yay! Yes. How exciting is that, everybody? Yes. Billy yes. Harris so, is making this available to yes. you as a gift. You are Billy Harris, yes. of course, one of our title sponsors, the highest level. You have done so much for us. We have enjoyed everything. And um, we are so excited to yes. make little little dolls yes. out of these this pattern. Really, these will be fun. I've enjoyed watching everybody making their Maggie Bessie dolls from Bradley's pattern. Yes. And I expect the same artists to complete their collection with the paper version. Of course. And, um, oh, we're just all so excited. Yes. And of course, that link will be at virtual doll convention site too. So. Yes, we'll put it. We'll put it everywhere. And thank you so much for that. Yes. That's so exciting. Now, Billy, before we go off, I want to show um, the article that you have written in Doll News, and this is amazing. 
And again, you can see some of the dolls we showed today, including the, the family's version and some of the photographs. Um, and it's very detailed. It, it goes you into the construction and um, so forth. Of, to some close-up detail. I mean, they, they added so much dimension to the painting so the doll just didn't look like a flat face. Right. They really added the eyeshadow and just beautiful quality of painting. Um, I'll show you one more page. Look There's several. That. Oops, nope, we skipped over. Yes. Well, anyway, we've got well, all kinds guys, of wonderful there articles it is. This in is here. amazing. Oh, no, Doll News is a wonderful magazine. Such a great this resource. This is a fabulous resource, though, for people who would like to really get into the nitty gritty and learn more. This is which. Um, issue is this one this, this was spring. the spring issue of 2019 yeah when um, this came this, out the wonderful the article floor. by our sammy odin on with the photo on the front and then of course you can see it's a half inch of all kinds of wonderful oh this magazine never highly recommend it yes well this was incredible billy it is so wonderful to be here of course at your amazing uh, place out here in North Carolina, this wonderful Hollygate Manor, and to, to be here with you to see your collection. Thank you so much. Thank you, Rachel, for coming. We love you. We love you. Bye. Bye.